Now you're very welcome back. So there were uh, genuinely extraordinary scenes in League One at the weekend to tell us more and to tell us about the fallout which is continuing. Very happy to say Philippe Beauclair is on the line. Hi, Philippe. Good evening to you. I hope I can help you. I'm struggling. <laughs> it's funny, you know, I was watching Malice at the Palace, which dropped on Netflix oh, over the last yes. uh, couple of days. I think lots of people are making their way towards it, where uh, NBA players were involved with the crowd in a good old ding dong. And Nice against Marseille, which was abandoned in Nice, isn't a million miles off what we saw in uh, the palace all those years ago so um, maybe just for people who haven't seen this I suspect most people have but you might just describe how this all kicked off Dimitri Payat got things really moving well I think it's rather the Nice supporters who got things moving by throwing a number of objects at uh, Dimitri Payat including um, a full water bottle who hit, which hit him straight in the back it must have hurt a lot actually and uh, Payet reacted furiously and um, lobbed back the, the projectiles. I mean, there were many others, you know, being thrown. It was on a corner kick. Uh, many th others thrown at um, the uh, uh, Marseille players by the so-called ultras of that particular stand at the Allianz Arena in Nice. And they degenerated uh, pretty badly, um, as in uh, Payet actually kicked the ball absolutely magnificently and an incredible shot into the stands. Um, but some of the supporters, so-called supporters, uh, went into the pitch. The uh, stewards had to intervene, and to be to be honest, uh, to them, they they did as well as they could possibly could as they possibly could at the time. Uh, there were some heated exchanges between the Marseille and um, the uh, Nice players. Uh, three Marseille players uh, were injured uh, or bore the marks of injury, even though this is something which is. Uh, put in doubt by some people in Nice, absolutely typical for, for this kind of thing. Uh, but it was it's just absolutely scandalous and um, uh, it's shocking and, and I have to say really, really dispiriting given the way that the season had started and the season had started really well in France. It, it had been a superb start to the, to, to, to the Liga and this suddenly happens. It's not the first time there have been incidents in this particular fixture uh, because obviously Marseille and Nice, even though they're not as close to each other as you might think. It's it's some kind of a local derby. Mm. There are two big clubs, historically speaking. Nice has been a big club in the past, and Marseille is, of course, one of the big, biggest clubs in, in club football. But the fact is that uh, three of the Marseille players, Gendouzi, Payet, and Luan Perez, uh, were actually checked by the, the doctor after uh, the the incidents and were actually showing signs of injury. Mm. Uh, Luan Perez, in particular, I mean, it was a pretty nasty uh, injury on the neck. Uh, it completely out of, went out of hand. And then... Obviously, the players left the pitch. Uh, there was apparently, and this is where we are entering an area where people are giving different versions of event, but Marseille decided uh, not to go back to the field because they couldn't, you know, they couldn't be assured that the safety of their players would be assured, which I think is fair enough. Uh, the Nice players came back on the pitch and the corner kick didn't take place but it was staged it was a surreal scene with the Nice players waiting for a corner kick to be delivered by a Marseille player who wasn't there mm. and then finally everybody left the pitch and then it's mayhem um, because uh, you would have hoped and perhaps expected that the football authorities would have taken very strong stance on that immediately uh, instead of what we've had um, a number of people expressing their opinions on that. It's become a huge affair. I mean, it's the biggest affair uh, on, on all French media at the moment when it comes to football, everybody giving their, their opinion and the people who should be uh, taking decisions, basically deciding, you know, going, You probably, I hope you're here when I'm, and you guess what I'm doing now, uh, doing the old Pontius Pilatus uh, gesture saying, well, you know, it's terrible, it shouldn't happen, all these sort of things, but you know, let's let's have somebody else decide uh, as to what's going to happen. And the latest, well, one of the latest developments is the LFP, which, uh, in interestingly enough, is is run by former president of Olympique Marseille, Vincent Labrune, as called on the French government to intervene. Nothing less, uh, instead of you know taking their own decisions and applying the regulations. Hmm.
I thought yeah. they had summoned both clubs to a disciplinary commission tomorrow. Yes, they have, yes. They have indeed. Um, and uh, what will come out of it, we, we have absolutely no clue. Yeah. Um, the clubs have uh, themselves have uh, issued statements. Uh, they've been uh, very free of their uh, um, opinions on, on various medias. Uh, Marseille are saying that uh, they were never told that should they leave the pitch, they would have to forfeit the game and therefore lose the three points. That's what they say. It never happened. They say the referee was in favor of abandoning the game because he didn't think he was uh, capable of, of basically uh, managing a, a completely uncontrollable event. Uh, apparently, the préfet, which is the kind of local Home Office Authority. There's no real equivalent in 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 Britain or in Ireland. Um, decided that the game had to go on because otherwise it would be um, it would create a big problem. And in fact, the game didn't go on. It didn't create any big problem. Uh, what else? Um, some of the uh, the mayor of Nice has intervened, saying that Dimitri Payet was the real provocator and was more culpable to than anybody, which um, is if disappointing completely. Uh, to be expected from this particular gentleman. Um, and at the moment, nobody quite knows what's going to happen because th I think that most of us football fans reacting to that, we would have thought Marseille were absolutely right to leave the pitch. Mm. And they, 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 they did the right thing because otherwise, God knows what could have happened. And they were absolutely right not to come back. And I can't imagine for a second in which mental state the players must have been after subjected what was a genuine attack. Mm. It was, we're not talking about people, you know, throwing an empty bottle. We're talking about a proper attack, assault on players by these ultras. Yes. Um, and let's hope there are some very, very strong sanctions. Uh, nice, anyway, the, the word is that there will be, the, this particular stand will have to be uh, uh, empty for four or five games. Uh, they probably, I mean, but the question is, uh, are they going to uh, be given uh, a defeat, uh, which I personally think they should, but that's my opinion, or is, as Marseille is uh, saying, should the match be replayed uh, on, you know, behind closed doors on a neutral ground? That's where we are at the moment. Yes. I can understand the Marseille players' refusal to continue, and you can imagine how difficult it must be to try and play football with the constant feeling that maybe, just maybe, a bottle might be heading in your direction at any moment. It would be uh, distracting to uh, put a, not too fine a point on it. Yes. Just on the um, incident itself, which genuinely was dangerous and, and, you know, was in danger of really getting out of control and there were genuine altercations, it did seem to almost uh, calm down a touch and the fans started heading back towards the south stand and then a couple of moments later, the Marseille coach, Jorge Sampaoli, uh, was visibly irate. So Marseille, again, just to keep people with us, uh, that's Payet's team. That's the uh, team that had the bottles thrown at them. So he seemed to be just losing the plot over on the touchline and had to almost be dragged away by uh, several players, I think Payet included. And that seemed to reignite the situation and fans started coming on again. What Sampaoli said about the situation, Philippe, why did he get so... Uh, angry almost a couple of moments after it had seemed to calm down. Do we know what went on there? Uh, no, we don't. Uh, we don't know about that. Uh, many people, I mean, I might have missed it, but Sam Pauli, I mean, you know his character, Sam Pauli. He's, he's a very passionate man. Uh, and it's not at all out of character for him to, to react in such a way. But um, I, I, the, I personally, I mean, I might have missed it, to be honest. It's very easy to miss it because so everybody's been talking about it except him today. <laughs> I haven't heard from him. And you can imagine the club is trying to get things, you know, let, let's let's try to sort things out at the highest level. You can't have people constantly. It's like the, the Nice players haven't talked. Uh, you know, it, it's basically up to the people who are part of the hierarchy to talk. And uh, there are already too many people talking about it. But I honestly think that... Um, regardless of what you might think of Payet's reaction. And he will probably be sanctioned for it, and he should be sanctioned for it, because he shouldn't perhaps have reacted the way he did. But I think like 99% of the people in France are thinking, you know what, I'm not really his greatest fan, or her, you know, but if I somebody threw at me 
a full bottle of water from the stands, from a height, that hurts. That really hurts. And it's actually genuinely dangerous. And you can understand why he reacted the way he did. And uh, there, as I said, there have been problems between these two two teams in the past. I think a game in 2016 was, was stopped because of uh, some trouble. And uh, there is obviously an element in the Nice support which needs to be uh, taken out of, uh, of, yeah. of, of this particular support and never to come back at the Allianz Arena. Will this happen? No. Yeah. Will come onto the, the fans coming onto the pitch, I presume, is a rarity. How commonplace is it for bottles and objects to be thrown at players in French football? Uh, it's unfortunately not uh, an unusual sight. I remember, uh, I think it was uh, PSG's last visit to Lyon, which also has a reputation uh, with uh, a part of their supporters of being quite um, difficult to contain. And I remember Neymar taking a corner kick and being bombarded with bottles, but they were empty. And there is there is a bit of a difference between the two. Yeah. And and the, and also the stadium, the distance between the stands and and the corner flag was large enough for these um, all these projectiles mm. to land out uh, in, in not a dangerous zone. That was not the case at the Allianz Arena, where you're actually quite close to the pitch and it genuinely rained on the pitch itself. Mm. It's unfortunately not that um, unusual, uh, but to that extent, no, I haven't seen that for a very long time. Yeah. I, it, the incident highlighted as well, I think an aspect which is probably applicable to most football grounds, mm -hmm that if enough fans decide to come onto the pitch, the security generally isn't enough to stop them. Like they, they, Football games are generally reliant on this unwritten rule or this social norm that you just don't come onto the pitch because it was just kind of striking that suddenly, maybe a very different situation obviously, but a little bit like Wembley with the Euro 2020 final, suddenly when if there are enough idiots who are doing their thing and coming onto the pitch, suddenly the, the, the security people in their high-vis jackets all of a sudden go from looking pretty kind of formidable to looking pretty powerless. Yeah, they do. And uh, how could it be otherwise? Uh, we're talking about people who very often, uh, I mean, they're paid a pittance for doing um, a, a job which is a very difficult one. This is not what they're trained to do. I mean, it's part of their training, but we know that very often they're not trained properly. And uh, it's when you're confronted by these lunatics, these morons, uh, it's quite easy to uh, get very nervous indeed. You know, these, these are not police forces, security forces. And there were actually quite a number of it. When you see the images, you see, uh, the, I think the stewards reacted as quickly and as well as they possibly could. They literally formed, tried to form a chain, linking arms to prevent the, the fans from doing that, but there's only so much you can do. Mm. The, the, the thing is that immediately in France, some people have been saying, oh, uh, we should put back uh, fencing. I mean, when I hear that, I just, lose the will to live, honestly. Mm. I mean, have they learned nothing? Um, we should put, you know, already away fans, and these were home fans, by the way, but away fans are treated like animals in some French stadiums. It's, the treatment is absolutely disgraceful. I, I, I really, I feel very strongly about that. Okay, so. That, and, and, you know, compared to what is happening in, in, in England, for example, or, or, or in Scotland or, or in Germany. Yeah. Um, it's, it's the way they're treated. They're really treated like potential criminals. This doesn't encourage them to behave well, okay. first thing. Second thing, I would say that if you start talking about that, this immediately repressive uh, uh, discourse, when in fact... It is obvious we know who these people are. In fact, one of the Nice supporters, the one who actually hit Payet, uh, has been arrested and jailed. Right. I mean, you know, he was going to be interrogated. We, can, we know who these people are. Just ban them. Do what has been done in the championship and in England for a very long time where nothing of the kind is happening any longer. French football has got to grow up in this particular instance. And also, unfortunately, French football... Uh, the, the people who are in charge in French football have got to grow up themselves and to take some responsibility and not constantly to throw the blame on others. I'm sorry if I sound very angry, but it's because I'm, I'm actually, I'm, I'm, I'm feel, I don't know, desperately disappointed in what happened and the reaction to it, especially after the season started so well. French football is much better than what you saw on Sunday night, believe me. No, you don't sound angry at all, to be fair. Uh, so... You mentioned um, these uh, morons, and uh, I guess we're talking about where I, uh, fans who I'm commonly seen referred to here in the media over the last few days as ultras. 
Yeah. Um, so this ultra culture in France, like um, I think we're all very familiar with ultra culture in Italian football and the influence that ultras have yep. in Italian football. Like I remember, I think it was Marseille fans storming the training ground and having to be yes, pleaded with absolutely. yeah, not so long ago. Again, the ultras and their influence isn't really as much of a thing in English football. So are clubs in France a little bit beholden to the ultras? Are they important? Would players be, you know, um, paying some kind of lip service here and there to the ultras? Are these people indulged a touch in French football in a way that, you know, doesn't really happen in the Premier League? It varies from club to club. Uh, for me, in some clubs, it amounts to complicity. Yeah. Uh, they were certainly used. I, I won't name clubs because I don't want you to get into trouble here, and I don't want myself to get into trouble. There's one club uh, certainly which has been using the ultras uh, for various purposes, shall we say? So, um, such, such as uh, maintaining order is that to be a euphemism? Okay, certain vigilante element. Mm, bit of that, yeah. Intimidation. Um, and it goes down to actually far, far darker, darker corners. That's that's not the rule, by the way. I'm just talking about a few clubs, and there are elements within uh, certain clubs. Certainly, PSG used to be the case. It's, there are still some problems. It used to be far, far worse uh, than than it is now. Uh, Lyon has got a real problem. Uh, Marseille has got a different problem. It's historical there, and um, it's a different culture. The Marseille ultras are unlike any others. But there are pockets of those ultras uh, in, in most clubs. And uh, they see it as a kind of badge of honor um, to, to be considered outlaws, hooligans, uh, outcasts, pariahs. And uh, they constantly, some of them, some of the elements are actually very forward looking, uh, interesting people to talk to, people who want to claim football for the fans, basically. But unfortunately, there is also an element within this ultra movement which is uh, which is quite different than the one we saw on on Sunday okay. with with the Nice ultras. But yes, there is a degree of complicity between some clubs and some movements. And what is it that's uh, slightly unique about the Marseille ultras? Because I think it pre the, the Marseille football culture. Um, is totally unique in, in, in France. Uh, the, the groups there have been established for a very, very long time. There is, um, I, I was going to say, an intermeshing of the club and the supporters groups, not of whom I ultras, by the way, uh, which goes back a long way, uh, which is unhealthy in some ways, notably in the way that uh, fans were allowed to sell tickets, for example, and were the, the there were official sales points for the tickets. Um, the one thing I would say is that um, perhaps in Marseille, there is a dimension to it which is a purely, di and perhaps I'm a romantic here, perhaps because I, I actually love that club and love its history. I'm not a fan, but I, I love the club. And there is a dimension which is quite different from those elements who, honestly, for me, are quasi criminal, uh, which I see elsewhere. Yeah. Yeah, well, extraordinary scenes. Like I said, this was yeah. Nice's uh, first game in front of home supporters since March 2020 well. I mean geez back with a bang <laughs> when you compare that honestly when you compare that with the images I saw from San Mames at Athletic which were honestly made me cry um, it was so beautiful because it was a genuine communion of, of uh, a team and it's public coming back to the cathedral as they call it mm. and I compare it to what I saw in Allianz Arena you, you want to weep honestly yeah and of course uh, the uh, well, that's the backdrop and Messi, it seems, is poised to make his uh, debut for PSG <laughs> on Sunday. I hope he's not having hey. second thoughts. <laughs> hey, well, um, that's, that's going to be uh, interesting as well. <laughs> as, you can, as you can imagine, um, I'm not absolutely sure he's going to make his debut, but, you know, if you tell me so, I mean, I'm, I'm happy to take it. And I think everybody will have a look. Oh, what kind of team is, uh, is uh, Pochettino going to put in, in place? Especially, I mean, because the... You've now got a, a new wind in the sails of the rumours taking Kylian Mbappe to Real Madrid. I mean, it's going to be like that until 31st of August anyway. Mm. Uh, so, yes, perhaps this, um, uh, despite whatever you can think, and you probably guess what I'm thinking about it, about Lionel Messi get, going to Paris Saint-Germain and their recruitment and so forth, perhaps we'll be able to talk about something a little bit more pleasant if... Uh, not completely pleasant uh, about Ligue 1. I'd much rather talk about Clermont Ferrand promoted from Ligue 2 and playing phenomenal football and playing a 3-3 last weekend, which honestly was just a thing of beauty. 
And there are plenty of things to be excited about for French football. Uh, some of the teams are looking great. Uh, whether you like them or not, PSG certainly will be a team to follow, and especially this weekend, if what you say is true. And I can imagine it's going to be uh, the toast of, um, of French football. Perhaps we can hope that there is a resolution to this conflict um, very, very soon, uh, perhaps as soon as Thursday, because it's usually on Thursday that the league and the disciplinary committee uh, take their decisions. So tomorrow the hearings and perhaps Thursday we'll have uh, a decision, perhaps even earlier. I mean, the sooner it ends, the better it will be for absolutely everyone. Mm, okay. Philippe Auclair, great to have you on. Thanks, Philippe. Thank you.